Most students first experience physics as a study of mechanics, which involves the movement of objects and the forces that cause that movement. These principles were first codified by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687 when he published his Principia or Principia, depending on how you want to anglicize the Latin. The second major branch of classical physics is electricity and magnetism, and that's what we'll be starting with this chapter on electric charge and force. The major principles of electricity and magnetism were summarized in 1861 with James Clerk Maxwell's equations. He did this by organizing the work of others, such as Faraday, Ampere, and Gauss, and adding mathematical formality and one of his own terms to the equations. The topics covered in the second branch of physics will start with electricity, then magnetism, and finally it will be shown how the two are really different ways of looking at the same force, the electromagnetic force. Even with the revolution stirred by quantum mechanics and relativity in the 20th century, the classical principles of mechanics and electricity and magnetism still were used to land astronauts on the moon and electrify most of the world. This chapter will present five major topics. The phenomenon of electrical charge will be discussed first, both from a simple demonstration and a historical viewpoint. Next, the source of this charge will be shown, and two methods of transferring charge from one object to another, which involves another great classroom demonstration, the electroscope. Finally, Coulomb's Law, along with a number of problems, will be discussed. Coulomb's Law will be compared and contrasted with Newton's Law of Universal Gravitation, showing the beautiful symmetry of our universe and the forces that govern its operation. So let's get going with electric charge. This slide should be shown with a very simple but striking classroom demonstration. Tear up half of a page of notebook paper into small pieces, the smaller the better, and have a plastic ruler and a piece of animal fur available. Most science supply companies sell electrostatic kits which include rabbit fur and other instruments that can be used here. First you put the ruler near the paper bits and show that absolutely nothing happens. After a vigorous rubbing of the ruler with the fur, you then bring it near the paper bits and they leap up, attracted by the ruler. This phenomenon was known for a couple of millennia. In fact, the ancient Greeks noticed that when thread was spun over a spindle of amber, a spindle is something used for making thread and was also involved in the Sleeping Beauty fable. Not exactly sure how, but that's not really the point of this lecture. The thread was then attracted to the amber, when before it was spun, there was no attraction. Since the Greek word for amber was electron, this invisible force received the name electric in the 1600s from English physicist Will William Gilbert and English physician Sir Thomas Brown. Further experiments show that this new force came in two flavors, unlike gravity. Dissimilar objects would be attracted to each other after being rubbed with certain materials, where similar objects would be repelled. This was quite unlike gravity, where there is only a force of attraction. And again, unlike gravity, this effect was not permanent. It would wear off after a time. This indicated that something was being exchanged between the rubbed object and the object doing the rubbing. This something was later called charge. It was left until late in the 18th century for Ben Franklin to set the convention for these two types of charges arbitrarily calling the charge that is acquired by a rubber rod, rubbed by fur, negative, and the charge that appears on the fur is positive. The important point is that no new charge is created. The charge gained by one object is equal in magnitude and opposite in sign to the charge lost by the second object. Thus, in the beginning, before the contact, each object is considered to be neutral or possessing no net charge. Afterwards, if you add the negative charge on one object to the positive charge on the other, you still get zero total net charge, just like things were before the contact. This is one of the great conservation laws, along with energy and momentum that recovered in mechanics. Basically, what you start with is what you finish with. 